One other factor that has a big importance is the psychogenic factor, or higher cortical functions or thoughts that can affect how our body works. Anxiety, anything that activates um, anxiety where you're nervous, a higher cortical function or sensation can create activation of the sympathetic nervous system. This is the opposite of the parasympathetic nervous system. This is that fight or flight reaction where blood is br uh, brought back to the core of the body, which means away from peripheral organs like the penis. This can be affected by a profound quantity of different factors. Some of them are psychiatric or psychological diseases like uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, um, the medications to treat post-traumatic stress disorder or depression, um, anxiety. Anxiety is a big one. Uh, even the medications to treat anxiety can cause, I know that sounds, yeah. <laughs> sounds a little uh, counterintuitive, but that's, that seems to be the case. Um, and a lot of those factors, um, some can be modified and some cannot, but basically there's a big higher cortical input and that interplay with both medications and that higher cortical input can affect your erectile function immensely. Cortisol is kind of the hormone that comes when you feel like you're being attacked, right? Exactly, so we like to call it your fight or flight hormone. We, we all innately have cortisol, we need cortisol. So if you're running from a bear in the wild, you really want that cortisol to kick in. Like what happens when you're running from a bear? Cortisol kicks in, hopefully. <laughs> I, mean, I thought you were supposed to play dead. Right. Is there a dead option in the flight or fight? Yeah. Or? Um, I mean, <laughs> that would be the flight, I guess. Uh, um, <laughs> but in the fight, yeah, your body, you want it to work for you and it's going to. You're gonna keep going and going and going. However, if that bear was to keep chasing you, say um, for 24 hours, what do you think eventually would happen? It's gonna run out. And so cortisol is meant to work for us, not against us, but in um, a chronically stressed health society that we live in anyways, and that paradigm really gets thrown off and therefore the byproduct, it's like the domino effect hmm. with the ED or the symptoms. Uh, for some people it being ED, other people it may be like an autoimmune condition, for other people it may be a thyroid condition, a lot of times what we're genetically predisposed to, that's when genes will um, fire. So we say genes load the gun, but environment, lifestyle, and the gut microbiome pull the trigger. And so genes being about five to 10% of our health outcomes, the rest, 90 to 95%, being related to gut health or stress levels, lifestyle that plays a role into those things. So when you're in kind of a more calm state and not in a fight or flight state, then your body is doing what it's supposed to do. So it's, it's you know, kind of responding healthily to sexual stimuli, it's regulating your breathing. Those are all those parasympathetic functions. And when you're not in fight or flight, all those things are going as they should be, mm -hmm. okay? And you don't even notice them, right? But when you get your sympathetic going and you got that fight or flight, then all of a sudden you're not hungry and your breathing is accelerated, and your sexual arousal is all messed up because you're more concerned with that, you know, getting away from that dangerous situation than you are with having sex. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. As a sexologist, I'm sure you see lots of couples. So what are some of the common things across all the couples that come to you dealing with ED? I think that there are definitely some commonalities that I see um, with all couples struggling with ED. Mm -hmm. And I, I think one thing that definitely is worth mentioning is that a lot of the struggles that men have are the same struggles that women have. Really? We just don't let men talk about it as much maybe, or they're not as brave enough, I guess, to talk about it. But definitely I think just the same pressures of maybe a hard day at work, Maybe mm -hmm. that you're tired, you didn't get enough sleep the night before, and so then it's just harder to get an erection. Mm -hmm. Maybe you've had some something in your past, a bad relationship, that you're just holding on to that still. Um, the stress of, of a, just a bad day overall. There's just so many things that could be contributing to it that, that have nothing to do with medical issues. It's just everyday stress mm -hmm. that can contribute to it. But then you get into a downward cycle, cycle of maybe one of those things has come up, you can't get an erection, and then you get in your head and it just spirals out of control. Mm. So it's a psychological aspect exactly. of it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So I, I think communication is so important because if you don't communicate when pressure comes up or maybe when you um, find yourself having a bad day and you don't get an erection, then you start in this downward spiral and it can you know, quickly get out of control mm -hmm. and that's when withdrawal happens. 
I oftentimes at that point find the, the person in the relationship who doesn't have the problem with ED wondering if it's their fault and think there's, thinking there is something wrong with them.